Hello, I'm Carrie, and I'm here in the kitchen at the Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetlands in Seattle. And I am going to make um, a wild greens spanakopita. And spanakopita is a Greek food that is like a little spinach pie. Um, but you don't have to use spinach, you can use any kinds of cooking greens you want. And so um, today we're going to use a combination of wild greens, which um, for example, I have some dandelion and some dock and some chickweed and some cultivated greens. I have also some chard in there and some um, kale flowers. So the things that we're going to need for this um, recipe are a whole bunch of wild greens. We're going to need about six cups chopped and that is um, packed. So pretty dense in there. Um, herbs, let's see, um, any kind of herbs you like. I've got some thyme and some sage in there. Um, I use a little bit of salt and pepper, so we're gonna need butter. You can use olive oil or any other kind of cooking oil that you like the taste of. Um, I use also um, some cheese. So this is about six ounces oops, of uh, feta cheese, which will crumble into there. And um, I also will use uh, an egg, and that's just to bind it. So if you don't eat eggs, you can use a little bit of flour or something like that. And we're going to use uh, some phyllo dough, which is very thin pastry. And um, we actually, it's what they used to make with baklava. And so we'll, um, we're gonna brush some butter or oil in between the layers of very thin pastry and that's gonna make it super flaky. So let's get started. So I'm gonna chop up some of the chard and um, it's been washed, it's a little bit wet. You could just, you don't have to worry about spinning it dry. It just, um, it likes to have some of the water that's on it. Uh, if the, the stems of the plant are really thin, you can just leave them on. With the chard, I'm actually going to take them off for now, but I am going to still include them because that's also good eating. But what I'm gonna do is chop them separately so that I can get them smaller. And um, I'm I, this is just gonna be a rough chop, so I'm just kind of like bundling it um, as best I can. And, doesn't need to be perfect, it's going to get cooked down. And then with these little ones, uh, I mean with the stems, I'm going to cut it much smaller so that the cooking time will be about the same. This is the kale flower bud and this looks, uh, you can use it just like you would use a broccoli rob or um, gylon or Chinese broccoli, anything like that, even any kind of um, other, other broccoli and um, I just kind of feel to where the stem is uh, tender and kind of snap it like that. And I will keep the tender stems for some of the more mature flowers. These have open flowers on them. I'm actually just gonna strip them off of that stem because I know it's gonna be kind of tough. And, um, and I'll just strip it off like I would rosemary or something like that. For these bigger pieces, I might chop them into smaller just um, so that they cook down at the same rate as the rest of my greens. So the pot is on. I'm getting it a little bit um, hot to start out with and then I'm gonna start the pot with a little bit of fat. So that is butter. You can use oil. Once that starts heating up, I'm gonna put my greens in. I am also gonna add just a pinch of red chili flakes and that is not in the recipe necessarily, but I am winging it. And um, when you cook your greens, you can add a little bit of salt and pepper, but I, um, because I'm adding feta cheese, the, um, I actually am not gonna put a lot of salt in here. put just a little bit of salt that's gonna help it wilt so it's been cooking just on kind of a medium heat with the lid on um, and I've been stirring it every once in a while for maybe about five or ten minutes um, if you're using kind of thicker leaves like collard greens you might want to cook it longer but since most of what I um, am using is um, fairly soft early spring greens I'm not cooking it very long and you can see there's a lot of different color and texture in there. Um, got my chard and my kale flowers and 
um, I'm just gonna turn this off. I'm gonna um, let it cool down. Greens are all cooked. I'm going to just tip them out into um, a colander and that is gonna help them just in case there is a lot of moisture in there. We don't want our pies to be soggy. And I'm gonna maybe just press it with the back of the spoon. I'm gonna put this to the side and let it cool. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna chop up some herbs. Um, you can use whatever herbs you like. You can add some other spices as well. I um, have in my bowl some thyme and some sage, and I really like thyme in almost everything. Um, it's super easy to grow. Sometimes the stems are really soft and sometimes they're a little tougher, but I kind of just take my fingers, oops. Sometimes it helps to go in the opposite direction. If it's very, if the stems are soft and you're having a hard time getting the stems, uh, the leaves off of the stems, then that means that they're soft enough that you can probably just um, chop them up as well. And what's left with the tough stems, you can uh, put them in a container that you keep uh, your um, ends and peels of your onions and your garlic skins and the tops and tails of your carrots. Keep that in your freezer and uh, make stock out of it. So I'm going to just chop this up pretty small. Um, and you can also just chop like this too. This is feta cheese, it's about six ounces. This might be a little bit more. I like a lot of cheese. Um, and you can buy it already pre-crumbled too, or you can buy it, I feel like if you buy it in this block, it lasts a lot longer. Um, usually it will be kind of floating in some brine. Um, leave the brine in there because that's gonna help keep it um, uh, in the refrigerator. It will keep for a really long time in the back of your refrigerator, I think, if you keep it in the brine. So you can buy some feta, leave it in the brine, and just um, use small amounts of it as you need. I'm just gonna kind of crumble it into chunks. You can also buy it pre-crumbled, but it won't last nearly as long. Okay, so it's cooled down a little bit. Um, I am going to add my herbs, and um, I'm gonna also add my cheese. Um, just gonna kind of fold it in. And I'm putting the um, cheese in first because I want to taste it before I add the egg. Um, I'm not going to want to taste the filling once I add the egg because it'll be have raw egg in it. I'm going to add just a little bit more salt. That cheese is not as salty as I imagined it would be. That's what you get when you buy the fancy kind. And then, put my egg in there. Alright, and that egg is just going to bind this filling so that it um, kind of firms up. If you've never used phyllo before, um, I just buy it pre-made, and it, uh, you'll find it in the freezer section, usually of the store. Um, but you'll have to pull it out and let it thaw before you want to use it. So then I would just put it in the refrigerator, um, you know, a day before you want to use it, or um, I just bought this a few hours ago and just left it on the counter for a few hours. I'm just going to cover it with a little bit of plastic, because um, that's going to keep it moist while I'm working with it. We have this uh, phyllo pastry. I'm going to take these sheets one at a time. It's very delicate. Um, it's kind of fun. Da -da -da. Okay, I'm put it on my board. And what I have in here is some melted butter, but you can also use um, olive oil or um, uh, melted coconut oil, avocado oil, whatever. Um, you have in your pantry, whatever you like to cook with. Um, I like to use butter because it tastes really yummy. And obviously use what is in your budget and what your dietary restrictions call for. I like to do three layers. So I'm gonna do one layer of phyllo, a layer of butter, Another layer of phyllo. And every time I lay the pastry down, I'm gonna add 
And I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut this into thirds the long way. I'm going to take about two tablespoons of my mixture. Oops. Uh, using a scoop like this can help measure um, so that all of your pies are consistent. Um, but I also like to just use a spoon. I got my filling in there and there's, remember there's three if you've ever folded a flag before, this is the very same idea. Just getting it into a triangle there. I've also, um, kind of before I started this process, I preheated my oven to 350 degrees. Um, and these are going to go in the oven and bake just for about 15 or 20 minutes. Under, I like to put the seam on the bottom. I'm just going to put a little more butter um, over the top and that's going to help it brown, get nice and crispy. And then I have a sheet pan. Uh, just that I put a little bit of I put a little bit of parchment paper on there and give them a little bit of space. I'm going to um, uh, make three more, put them in there, and stick them in the oven 15 to 20 minutes. While that's in the oven, let's take a look at some of the greens that I put inside the little Spanakopita pies. I used a combination of wild greens. Um, other what other normally would people would consider weeds, um, edible weeds, and also some cultivated um, leaves as well. So some of the things that I put in are, this is chickweed, um, which is a common garden weed. This is a very large chickweed because it was growing in the shade. A wild sort of weedy garlic that uh, sometimes is called crow garlic, um, but it looks very similar to this which is chives, common garden chives, just about to put out some flowers. Um, the chives smell a little bit like onion. They're kind of an oniony flavor. And then the garlic, um, the wild garlic is uh, more of a garlic flavor, but you can see, although they look similar from the outside, their chives are kind of round in shape and then the crow garlic is a little flatter. Dandelion is uh, very common uh, easy to find, easy to identify, um, wild green out there. It has a bitter flavor. You can also eat the flowers. You can actually eat any part of the dandelion. And I like to, um, when there's so many flowers out, I like to pick a bunch of these and I kind of take a, my fingers and open them up so that I pull just the, the petals out and that will make um, them far less bitter if you take this. Uh, the green sepals away and this yellow stuff you can add that to your pancake mix you can add that to a muffin base um, and put it into your baked goods uh, it's got a lot of nutrients and a lot of protein in there actually and it's sweet because there's nectar i also um, added some plantain and this is a pretty common weed um, there's a few different kinds it is um, plantago lanceolata which is this, the lance leaf plantain which is different than the banana plantain. They're two different plants that have a similar common name. Curly kale, um, so kale is happening right now. And then curly leaf dock, the curly dock. And I find that this one is um, pretty delicious. It's a little astringent, but has kind of a lemony sour flavor. Um, this is the purple dead nettle. Um, they call it a dead nettle because it looks like nettle, but it doesn't sting. It actually is not even related to nettle, but it's in the mint family, so it has this square stem. It's not bitter or sour, but it does taste a little bit like dirt, so um, it has, its flavor profile is more along the lines of chard and beets, kales, mustards, collards, um, broccoli there sending up flower shoots, and you can eat those. So I like to mostly eat them in the bud stage, which something like this is actually looks really similar to like a broccoli rob. As they start to bloom, they'll kind of stretch out a little bit. And these open flowers are actually pretty sweet. 
if you um, eat them because they've got nectar in them to attract the bees. So I use the whole flowers, you can use the flower buds, and you can leave this, use the stems all the way up to, um, when it starts getting tough, I'll pop the tough stem off. I've got two different colors of chard. Um, I like to utilize the stem as much as I can when I cook chard. And I um, read somewhere that in France, the vegetable is actually the stem. And then they, you know, they, when they peel off the stem, they use this part and then are less uh, inclined to use that part. I also added some thyme and some sage. I think that herbs are one of the things that make the most sense to grow if you have a tiny garden space or not a lot of um, time to do gardening because they take very little effort. You plant them once and maybe you might need to water them a couple times during the summer, but other than that, um, they pretty much uh, just kind of hang out there. If this was growing on the plant and I just needed one stem for a recipe, I just pinch that off and then I'm just sort of, as I'm harvesting, I'm kind of pruning it back a little bit. And then, then I just use a little bit that I need for my recipe. Whereas if you had to buy fresh thyme from the grocery store, um, you'd have to buy it in a certain amount. They can be quite expensive. And then if you don't use it all, it just kind of rots in your refrigerator. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here that I um, added to uh, this mix. They were in the oven for about 15 or 20 minutes. And um, I think that looks pretty nice. Ooh, they're very crispy. We can do a cute little stack here. Edible garnish. wonder what it tastes like. It looks pretty flaky. Oh yeah, here we go. There you go, you can see all that filling and the cheese. Super flaky. It's a little hot, but it tastes really good. Mmm. It doesn't even need any sauce or anything. It's super buttery. It's got cheese and can't even tell there's dandelions in there. Wild Greens Banacopita.